Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great night and today I want to show you how I went by when I made a replacement for this part. So this is for a Manfrotto camera um, tripod. So I'm first taking out some standard measurements. I'm, I'm starting big as always. Take the biggest measurements you can and then work into the details. So let's start off with creating the uh, rectangular here for the outwards measurements or the, sorry, the outer measurements. So I'm just filling in all the numbers here, uh, making sure that it's correct. There we go. And then next up, I want to do the thickness. So I create an offset for the sketch. I can create a new sketch. So I want to measure the thickness of the whole model. And um, next up, I'm just going to offset that same amount or actually the whole thickness in this case. Then again, I, I create the smaller rectangle uh, since it's a chamfer on the model uh, or, or it has bent side or, or angled slides. So I want to make the new rectangle here, as you can see, that is the same width, but it's, um, uh, smaller, basically. So we'll see here if I just get the numbers right. There we go. So now with these two, I will just loft them together. So go here, click on loft and just yeah, select both of them. So you can see now I've created a a chamfer model. Next up, measuring the diameter here for the hole and just sketching up a hole. There is a feature for holes as well if you want to, but I like sketching. Um, so I'm just going to sketch a hole here and extrude it. Or press pull, it doesn't really matter as long as you just get the hole all the way down. Next up, we have the um, thickness of the side. So I'm just creating a sketch here and measuring the edges of the model here. So I can just offset the sketch the same amount. So I get kind of a uh, thickness on the sides and then I will just push the, this up inside of the model. Um, something like that. Um, next up, I just want to do uh, like a, a bigger radius here for the, for the actual uh, screw, the, the quarter inch screw that goes into the camera. Needs a little bit of a slot just below there. Next up is to create the uh, uh, the the locking device on the side. So there's actually uh, like a small feature to make sure that the the plate is locked in. So I'm just sketching up here a thing that I can then then um, just remove from my original model. So you can see I'm I'm doing some chamfer there just because. To, the, the original has it, so why not replicate it as well? So I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. I noticed that they were too far down. It's actually around a millimeter, so I'm just figuring out the measurements here. Uh, changing the radius a little bit. It's just great that you can do that. I really love that. Something like that. We select these sides here and we more or less just extrude through. I know if you're a SOLIDWORKS engineer and you've been doing this for 25 years, maybe you have a better way of doing it. but this is what works for me and it's really quick and dirty. So that side is done. Let's go and uh, just, well, chamfer the, all the other sides. They, they, they don't need to be extremely sharp. Um, actually, when you do these chamfers, you usually trick your printer to do a little bit more of uh, material. So in, in some cases, it actually makes your model um, stronger on the sides um, because it has to print more parameters or more top layers and so on, so it adds some material along the edges. So next up, I'm just creating this feature here um, to, to uh, basically replicate the original, but I, you will see that I later on kind of <laughs> changed my mind. So um, as you can see down on the left, there's great history that I can, I can just go back to later. But um, I'm just doing the chamfer here because once you start doing chamfers, it's really difficult to stop. No, but seriously, I should really stop doing chamfers right now. So um, let's move on. <laughs> um, looking at the original model again, I just want to replicate here some of the sides. So I'm figuring out how I should do that and as always just sketching. So I'm taking another measurement here, just making sure that it's correct. Something like that. And I'm just going to overshoot it here so I can uh, do my patent pending extrude to remove model. No, it's not really patent pending, but it could be. 
So, um, since I want to have this and I didn't set up like a symmetry model, I'm just going to actually take the same parts. Um, I started off with doing some offsets and I figure, uh, what the heck am I doing? I'm just doing too much. So I'm just extruding a model, making sure that it's a new, uh, new solid. Move it over and uh, just aligning it up so it cuts the same amount, which I will do here by just pushing this side towards yeah, pushing that side towards the, the other sides here on the inside. You can see I'm clicking right there, so it's just snapped together. And then we do the edit and we do the combine and we take cut and just cut that model away. And voila, there we are. Next up, more chamfering, of course. Uh, so just, just tweaking here the model, making sure that it's uh, it slides in easily into the sockets. I mean, sure, it's pretty unnecessary, but Somebody might need it, so why not? Just pushing along here, um, doing some extra chamfers. I'm doing too much, way too much. And as always, I can figure out what amount to do it as well. It's just visual. But I think that's pretty much done. Um, I want to do one more change here. So I'm just looking here at the original model that has kind of bent over there. So I want to replicate that as well. I'm not sure if it's, oops, too, too many sides selected there. There we go. And then I realized that I don't really want the things here on top. So I start off by just clicking delete or, or push pulling, but that doesn't really work with the software. It kind of uh, buggers me. So I get errors all the time. So I'm just gonna, Try to click delete, but that uh, as well doesn't really want to cooperate. Some of the features it does. But um, in the end, I'm just going to go to the histogram down here and we'll just remove some of this stuff. That's really good that you can do that. You can just click remove and things disappear. I really like that. That's, that's a good thing. It says, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. So there we go. And time to print it. So I printed it with the carbon fiber from Filamentive. You can read more about that in the description. I made it pretty thick. You can see here on the shells that it's actually quite strong. So, I mean, I don't want to risk my camera. I want to print a few extra bucks of material if I can. And here I'm just going to show you how, it's, how it attaches. So you need to kind of align the screw. <laughs> but when you've done that, it should be just good and go. Where did you go? So you screw this in. I'm sorry that I'm wasting some of your seconds, but this is a really important moment, right? So uh, if you didn't figure it out, you need to tension the screw as well. So it works pretty well. So uh, the thing there on the back that I just snapped together, remember that that kind of puts some strain on, on the sides here. So you want to print it fairly strong so it really attaches. So this is a PL200 mount, uh, I think it's called that. I've seen some online before, but they didn't work. I, for some reason, everyone that I downloaded was the wrong format. So I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like this video, subscribe and download the model, like it on Thingiverse and do whatever you wanna do. Have a good day, bye.